With Keyhead version 21.1, a new backup system was introduced. In this video, I will show you how to create a repository, a location for your backups, how to start an immediate backup manually, how to schedule different backups and how to restore them. You can still find the item backup in the menu under settings, but now you can decide directly whether you want to continue to use the previous or the new backup system. If you decide to use the old backup system, backups will continue to be created as before. This can be used further without restrictions at the same time to the new system. However, in the future, the removal of the old system is planned, which also no longer receives new updates. You will be informed about the removal in time via the Keyhab new system. When you select the new system, backups will be created as incremental backups, so that only the data whose contents have changed will be backed up. For example, creating a first backup can take several hours, but the next runs can be done in minutes instead of taking the same amount of time. Of course, all data is just as securely stored in a backup repository. In order to create backups, you must first define it. A repository is a secure place where your backups are stored. This can be either locally or on a remote storage. To do this, go to the repository management and click on Add Repository. Choose a name for it, because since version 21.1 you can create as many repositories as you want. It is now mandatory that you enter a password. Without the correct password, no access to the repository or the data it contains is possible. Select the maximum number of snapshots below. A snapshot contains all the data stored in the backup at the time it was started. To prevent too many snapshots from being stored there, the oldest snapshots are deleted after the maximum number you have selected. Each repository created can now exist on a different server or cloud storage. We'll go through each option together. At first, you can create your repository locally but it would be better to create a backup on a remote storage because a backup is supposed to give you a security in case of data loss, but if your data and your backup are on the same server and there is a data loss, then your backup could be also affected. Therefore, a backup on an external server or cloud storage is recommended. As another option, you can configure remote storage via FTP and FTPS. For this, enter the hostname or IP address of the remote server if available a specific port, and the username and password of the server. As encryption you have three options. Select the option your server is configured to. Normally this should be explicit FTP over TLS. Also you can use only a plain FTP, which is however unencrypted and unsecure. You can check do not verify the TLS certificate of the server, which is only relevant for explicit and implicit FTP over TLS variants. For example, if you use a self-signed certificate and the server does not trust this. This way the certificate will be accepted and the transfer will still be encrypted. Specify the directory where the backup should be placed. Please make sure that the directory is also writable by the user you specified above. Another possible transfer protocol is SFTP. With this variant the transfer pass is always secured, which is why you cannot select this here. Again, enter the hostname and, if available, the appropriate port, as well as your username. As authentication method, you have the option password and the more secure variant of a public and private key. This key is a very long string, which must be found on the Keyhab server and on the backup server. So here you can create a private key that remains on the Keyhab server and the public key is inserted on the remote storage. Only if these two keys match, a connection is established. Often, this is the only way to connect the remote server. The next method would be via a Dropbox. Here you click on Request Access Code, then log into Dropbox itself and get a code back, which you then paste back into the matching field for it. The last storage type available is WebDev, for example for a key cloud. Take the web dev URL that you find in the application itself and paste it. Then enter your access data for this application and select a directory again. 
Once you have configured your desired backup server, you can now create a backup. The new feature is that you don't have to backup the complete database, but you can exclude certain files and directories from the backup. Up to now, the complete dataset was always backed up. If you want to backup the complete database, select Complete. If not, click on User Defined. Here you can use the checkboxes to select only the data that you want to backup. Under the item User Accounts, you will find even more specific sub-items. You can also define individual files by clicking on Files and Directories and entering the path to the file. The same applies to the item Exclude Files and Directories, except that the file to the path is not backed up. When you have defined your backup content, select in which repository these files should be stored, since you can create several. Below you can enter your mail address, so that you will be informed if errors occur during the process. You can also select the checkbox below to be notified in case of a successful backup. If you are in the user area of Keyhub, the whole backup process works the same way, except that you can only backup your personal user data. To avoid always having to manually start a backup and to have a regular backup of your data, you can schedule backups under this menu item. In the previous system, only one backup schedule could be set. This restriction no longer exists with the new backup function. You can now create as many backup schedules as you want. To do this, click on Add Backup Schedule. If you want to suspend a schedule but not delete it, you can uncheck as Activated. Now this backup will not be executed anymore. As interval of your schedules, you can choose daily, weekly and monthly. Depending on your decision, you can also set the time, the day of the week and the date. As with the manual backup data selection, you can define here which data should be backed up. Since you can select multiple schedules, it may be useful to you to back up different data at different times. For example, you can choose to back up your websites and databases once a week, your emails once a day and your entire database once a month. Again, you select your repository and, if desired, enter a mail address. In the overview, you will see your created schedules, which you can edit with the pencil icon or delete it with the icon next to it. You can also see when the backups were last performed. Also, since Keyhape version 21.1, you are able to restore backups directly in Keyhape itself. To do this, click on Restore Backup. In the first drop-down menu, select from which repository you want to restore your data. Then select your snapshot, the backup variant you selected at a certain point of time, and use the checkboxes to select which part of the backup you want to restore and click Save. This also allows you to restore individual folders and files. Here you can also select the restore location and choose either the original path or an alternative path, which you then type in here. Just some general information, KeyApp relies on the backup tool RESTIC to manage backup repositories. If you want more information about it, consult the official homepage at RESTIC.net, which is also linked in KeyApp itself. Thank you for your interest in this tutorial.